People, 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 good evening, good evening, good evening, you know who it is, Arsenio Buck, reporting live from Bangkok, baby, welcome back to the Arsenio Buck Show, man, I got a story for you today, so, a year ago, I was actually standing right outside my condo, and I was waiting, on, and it's funny because I was literally on fire, I was on fire in terms of getting ready to go work out, had a nice little nap, I was getting ready to go work out, I'm gonna repeat that again, then I was going to go to work. So I was actually standing on the main road. A mode of transportation came called the minivan. I opened the door. There was a man, of course, driving the minivan. Voila. And I asked him, are you going to this specific location? He didn't say anything. I asked him again, are you going to this specific location? He ignored me again. No one in the minivan. Of course, there are more than 10 passengers in that minivan. No one said anything. So with me not having any self-control at that given time, I slammed the door. He got out. And then he started he started just going blah 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 because that's the thing with some older men who do not have anything going for themselves in life. They are willing to jeopardize their life to throw away your life. He got out, he started saying blah 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 blah. He tried grabbing my shirt at times. I said, if you grab my shirt, I'm going to put my hands on you. Do not do that. Get back in your car and leave. This argument began escalating even more and more. Next thing you know, there was it looked like there was some form of prostitute in the passenger seat who rolled down her window and started saying, you, you, you bad, very bad man, bad man, bad man, very bad man. I was like, oh hell no. All of these students are watching me. All of these, we're talking about a cluster of about 50 people. And I said, you know what? And then it's funny because then he asked me for money. And I said, you know what? No, I walked away. Honestly, that situation was going nowhere. He kept approaching me. He felt that he was going to get money from the foreigner. I walked all the way to the next bus stop and went to this specific location and I'm like I was riled up right it's crazy how that escalated so quick but I was the bigger man obviously me being a foreigner I pretty much know you know what I'm not gonna this situation is just gonna get worse before it gets any better I'm just gonna walk away to the next bus stop so I did and of course here I am again attracted another situation within about an hour and a half putting on my clothes after a shower and whatnot next thing you know this student from one of these uh, private universities, came up to, uh, well, actually, he started talking between me and this other guy I was working out at the gym. And it's funny because he gave us a really sarcastic smile, and then he started screaming, literally screaming or yelling at his friend in a conversational tone, but very, very loud, just so he could interrupt us, just so he can get the same reaction as the minivan driver did, which he was itching for. And I said, you know what? I'm leaving. And I say, you know what? Before I do anything stupid, I'm just going to get out of here. These are some trash, high so kid, whack-ass youngsters. I'm getting out of here. Of course, you can, you, you'll you get engaged in this, especially in America. Man, I've gotten in plenty of arguments with African Americans out there in America because they just do not understand, basically, uh, the human ethics, if you will. <sighs> These arguments, no one is ever going to win an argument listen i was giving you guys a lot of times whereas i got in an argument with my brother now check this out another time basically i was working a convention all right a mcdonald's convention got paid 15 dollars an hour in america that is unbelievably crazy money uh 12 years ago at the age of 17 made uh, a boy i made a fortune in two weeks And it's crazy because my brother wanted a piece of it. See, this is why I just wrote a blog telling you and pinpointing and outlining all the things that why I guess the relationship between my brother and I never really lasted because there was always envy. There was always someone wanting a piece of my pockets. Well, at this particular time, in this particular day, someone knocked on the door to my bedroom and it was my brother's friend. He's like, hey, can I borrow five dollars? Five dollars is about one hundred and fifty baht. And I said, for what? It's my money. I have the right to ask. And I already knew what it was for. It was to fuel the addiction of marijuana. So basically he wanted to let he wanted me to loan him five dollars so he could buy marijuana. And of course, so he can smoke it. And honestly, I'm against marijuana. I'm against 
people smoking in my goddamn home. Of course, my mom did nothing about it. And I'm again, I was against my brother at my time. Oh my God, so many different things, right? So I finally forced myself and gave him $5. And it's funny because my brother came stomping up the steps, threw the $5 at the justice, started screaming. Oh my God, he was incensed beyond belief. What ended up happening? It was a fight. And you know what's even crazier? This guy, he, when he's angry, he's angry. He's right, no matter what. No matter what. There's nothing I could say to calm his ass down. It's crazy because my sister was living with her boyfriend at the time. She had to drive all the way from that side of town that she was living on to pick my brother up to stay with her for the next three days because he was so angry at me because I didn't let him borrow $5 to fuel his addiction in terms of smoking marijuana. Another time. It was funny because I was writing an email and I was like, and my brother, he blew up on me as he normally does. And this is always about money. And next thing you know, he threw my bag up against the wall. He wanted to fight. And next thing you know, I went outside. I'm like, oh, my God. He's not going to let me get my bag. I got to call the police. Call the police. The police allowed me to go back inside my mother's home to get my bag. And I went away for four days. I'm telling you, there is, there's no way, there's no way out. See, the thing is, I'm going to tell you guys, this is going to... This is going to correlate with a couple of the podcasts that are coming up right now with uh, Napoleon Hill. Because there is a specific story, the 1863 Lawrence Massacre that happened. Whereas someone very angry comes barging into your home and they want you to match that anger. Because if they do, they win. Or if you do, they win. But I never did with my brother. See... Was there any way that I could actually prove that he was wrong? Prove that he was going crazy? Is that going to make him like me? Hell no, he's going to want he's gonna want to punch me even more. Why not let him save face? You know what? He didn't ask for my opinion. He was just telling me who I was. Oh, I'm a selfish bastard. Okay, yeah. If I would have done that, the mother, he probably would have choked me. <laughs> of course, it wasn't like that severe. But well, I know I could defend myself. He's a little guy anyways. But why argue? Why even argue? What's the result? What's the conclusion? What's going to happen? Are you going to go to a higher heaven? Because, oh, I got the best of that argument? No. Just avoid it. Avoid it as avoid it as you would avoid rattlesnakes. <laughs> avoid it as if you can avoid uh, the, uh, let's say, the homeless dogs on the street. The goddamn German shepherds that are running wild on the streets of Las Vegas. Just avoid it. Because no one is going to win. You cannot win an argument. You can't because if you lose it, you lose it. And if you win it, you lose it. Why? Well, suppose you triumph over the other person and shoot his argument full of holes and prove that he is uh, uh, all types of assholes. Then what? What, you're going to feel fine? What about him? You made him feel inferior. You probably hurt his pride. You will ultimately end up resenting his triumph or your triumph there are so many times that we get engaged in different arguments with people and there's no way about when i remember i was in another argument with one of my colleagues boy this was like th- four th- three years ago and of course her being between 50 and 60 years old as the other cult was back in the south of thailand There was absolutely no way that I was going to win that argument. There was nothing I was going to say at that particular moment that was going to change the minds of them. Why? Because they are culturally embedded. Everything they say, I must follow. And although I was completely and diametrically opposed to it, I said, you know what? I'm just going to say a couple words and that's it. And over time, especially that was three years ago. And what happened last year, I could have threw my entire career away if I would have just pop pop real quick. Just just a, a two-piece, uh, a left jab, and, and, and just an overhand right to the guy in the minivan. What is that going to do? That's going to get me thrown out of a country where opportunity is just endless. Don't do that. See, it's crazy because if you argue, uh, if you argue, yeah, okay. If you argue, you might contradict yourself. Hell, you might achieve glory. You know what? But it will be an empty victory. There's nothing 
that's going to make you feel better. So I'm going to give you a nice little thing, a nice little example that could probably help you going forward in terms of just not even arguing. Like, you know what? And it's funny because I do this real quick. You know what? I just end up being quiet. As Dale Carnegie has put it in his book. And it's so funny because some people send me messages. You know, my friend in Australia, most notably, she would send me something in the morning, probably about two, three, four years ago. And I'd be like, you know what? I'm not even responding to this. I just stay quiet the whole day. Sometimes I would say, you know what? I'll talk to you tomorrow. Seems like you need, you know you need to you need to check yourself. There's no need to argue. No one's gonna win this. If I state my points and then you realize, oh, I did bad. The next day, nah, no, 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 no. I'm just gonna state whatever it is. Come up to, with a solution really quick. See, another one of my students, she's going through hell right now with one of her significant others. Her significant other just continues to berate her and so many other things in regards to her and her family, and she doesn't know what to do. And I'm like, okay. Worry situation. What's the ultimate outcome? What is this going to do? You're losing sleep. You're losing your appetite. Or maybe you're gaining appetite. You know, you're, you just keep eating because you're so stressed out. You're depressed because you guys broke up and whatnot. What is ultimately going to happen? What are the solutions? Hurry up. State whatever it is and say, good luck in life. And that's the end. Block all numbers. Block all emails. Block everything. And let that shit go. So here we go. Welcome to the disagreement. Now I want you to memorize this nice little slogan because I actually uh, I actually found this in the book. And I'm like, you know what? This is really, really good. And I'm going to have to write this out too. So first and foremost, distrust your first instinctive impression. So the thing is, with our first natural reaction in a disagreeable situation is to be very dis- uh, defensive, right? Be careful. Keep calm. And watch out for your first reaction. It may be your worst. And ultimately it will not be your best. You got to control your temper. See a lot of people in Thailand. They say oh just smile and just listen. Yeah listen. Listen to someone arguing. But at the same time we need solutions. You guys got to come up with something. Because if you just sit there and say yes yes I understand. I understand. If you get angry that's it. They win. Because your temper's up and no one's going to, they win. They are going to believe that they won and you lose absolutely horribly. See, remember, you can measure the size of a person by what makes him or her angry. So you're going to need to control your anger. Listen first, especially. Give, 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 the, give the other person, you know, you know, a chance to talk. Let them finish. Do not resist, defend, or debate, especially. Just let them finish talking, just like having that heart talk. This only raises the barriers. Try to build bridges of understanding. Don't build higher barriers of misunderstanding. All right, next. Look for areas areas of agreement. When you heard the other person's opinion, dwell first on the points and areas on which you agree instead of pointing out the disagreements be honest with yourself look for areas where you can admit error and say so apologize for your mistakes this will help you disarm the other person's uh you know disarm their defenses and reduce their defensiveness promise to think over your opponent's ideas and study them carefully see and mean it too because your opponent That person, that girl, your husband, your wife, whatever you want to call it, they may be right. It is a lot easier at that stage to agree to think about their points than to move rapidly ahead and find yourself in a position where you're, where that other person says, we tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. That's my mom always used to say that. Thank the other person sincerely for their interests. Anyone who takes the time to disagree with you is interested in the same things you are. Think of them as people who really want to help you. And you may turn your opponents into friends. You may may turn that opponent, that friend, your wife, or whatever, into friends. That's happened to me a lot. I've said, okay, you need to calm down. But first I hear them out and I say, okay, I agree with this. I agree with that. What can we do going forward? Solution, boom, done. It's that easy. Postpone action to give both sides time to think about the problem, right? Suggest that a new meeting or, you know, if you're working, especially if you're working, 
hold a meeting. Like what 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 happened uh, this past? Uh, I guess you could say a couple. Of, well, no, I'm sorry. This past week, actually had a meeting. We put everything out there on the table. We agreed to not have any more outbursts, and there it was done. And you know what? Eat, do it within the next 24 hours too. Don't hold it off for three days because that's going to continue to build, build, build. Just hurry up and get it out of the way. When all the facts are brought out there to bear in preparation for the meeting, such as what that particular, you know, my particular boss did, you're going to have to ask yourself some hard questions. Could they be right, which he was? Could they be partly right, which he was? Is there truth or merit in their position or argument? Absolutely. What, what just happened this past week. Is my reaction one that will relieve the problem or will it just relieve any frustration? Will it relieve my frustration and it made it even a bigger problem? A problem that it shouldn't even began. It shouldn't. It, it, it shouldn't have even been a problem. If that's the correct tense. Will that reaction drive your or drive whoever you're in an argument or a quarrel with further away or draw them closer to you? Will your reaction elevate the estimation uh, of good in that particular person? Will you win or lose? What price will you have to pay if you win? If you're quiet about it, will the disagreement blow over? Is this a difficult situation or an opportunity for me? These are the types of questions you're going to have to ask yourself going forward, especially in relationships, because people just rap about 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 and no one wants to listen to anyone. No one wants to agree. And of course, in relationships, they do the whole thing called uh, agreeing to disagree. No one is really rational, rational, you know, ra- rational. <laughs> Because when you are, you could actually solve things rather than just letting it just it just fester up, get worse, 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 then boom, there goes the explosion. Or just avoid it if you feel that it's really, really meaningless. So, with that being said, people, I hope this has helped you guys. And if you have any questions, you know how to get in contact with your boy. Stay tuned for Napoleon Hill tomorrow morning. With that being said, people, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening. This is your host, Arsenio. Over and out.